Today I'm going to ride an intercity train with a unique look, on a short trip in second class aboard this iconic Dutch train. We'll travel through the typically flat scenery of this country, while we discover just what makes these trains so special. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm at the spectacular Rotterdam Central Station and I'm going to be travelling with the Nederlandse Spoorweg and Dutch Railways over to Amersfoort. I'm going to be on one of the intercity trains for this journey, so let's go. Welcome to the new Rotterdam Central, a futuristic station fully reopened in 2014 with a grand design that is instantly recognisable. This new building was built to replace the former 1950s station, which suffered from capacity problems as a result of rapidly growing passenger numbers. And let's be honest, it wasn't exactly the most grand of stations either. One aspect of the old station that was kept is the lettering and clock, which are proudly displayed here above the main entrance. With the Netherlands being a country invested in sustainable transport, it's no surprise to find massive swathes of bike storage at such a major station. There are also good connections to other forms of public transport, such as the metro and trams. Anyway, time to head into this modern station ahead of my train's departure. The station's interior is every bit as grand as the outside, feeling very open and modern. It features a large selection of takeaway food and drink options, which comes in handy due to the unfortunate decision to remove catering from trains. Also in the main concourse is a selection of ticket machines and the staffed ticket office, though be warned that getting a paper ticket will result in an additional fee. Departures from this station run to all corners of the Netherlands and some international destinations, but my train today is Intercity 547, the 1305 to Meppel. Access to the platforms is only granted following an automated ticket inspection, which unlike those I've used in some countries, was simple and painless. This then leads to the station's main tunnel, from which you can access all platforms as well as additional shops and food outlets. My train is leaving from platform 14, at the far end of the station. And here's my train, a 1970s designed type ICM or Intercity Material, nicknamed the Koploper. The type is probably best known for having its cab all the way up here of all places, but more on that later. These units come in three and four car formations, with the ability to work in multiple when needed. My train today will be formed of two three carriage units. I'm travelling in second class today, and seats cannot be reserved so let's not waste any time getting on board. Second class is in a 2 plus 2 layout, with a good mix of airline style and bay seating. This forward facing airline style seat is as good as any other. Today's route starts here in Rotterdam, the Netherlands second most populous city. We'll be heading east, passing through the city of Gouda before arriving into the major station of Utrecht Central, where the train reverses for the last leg of the trip, over to Amersfoort. This trip is scheduled to take 57 minutes to cover the 77 kilometers or 48 miles of track. Departure is on time, at 13.05. <laughs> The journey begins with a ride through Rotterdam suburbs, for a short while riding alongside the high-speed line to Amsterdam. Intercity services like this one bypass many smaller stations, and are therefore a much more efficient way to travel than slower sprinter trains. Unlike intercity trains in other parts of Europe though, the intercity trains in the Netherlands are limited to just 140 km an hour. Our first stop is Rotterdam Alexander after about 8 minutes. This station is named after Alexander the Prince of Orange. Back on the move and it's time to look at the interior. 
First up, the seating. It's reasonably comfortable, with decent padding and a good shape. There's a leather headrest on top too. A downside has to be the seat's cover material, which is some sort of horrible rough vinyl thing. You can see the wear and tear, and it's not a good look. There's a big leather armrest, found at all seats. As well as some reasonably sized seat back tables, complete with a cup holder bracket. Legroom is definitely adequate, though I did find that the bins did get in the way of my legs a little bit, but at least they're helping to keep the train clean and tidy. We'll have a walk around the rest of the train a little later on, including the surprisingly great first class carriage, but first, a little bit of history behind this train's strange shape. Here's an older photo of an unrefurbished ICM unit. Among other slight changes, the key difference is the door on the front. In the past, when two units would couple together, a gangway would fold out, allowing passage between units. The raised cab allows passengers to use the gangway, it's just in a very different style to other examples of units with gangways. Unfortunately, due to poor reliability, this feature was removed in the 2006 refurbishment of the fleet. We're now crossing over the Khawa Canal, a heavily used canal built in 1936 to avoid the arduous and time-consuming process of routing ships through the centre of Khawa. This is closely followed by a stop at the station of Khauda, and yes, before you ask, this is in fact the place the cheese gets its name from. The city being where all trade of Khauda cheese historically took place, even if produced elsewhere, due to the city then having exclusive trading rights. Our journey continues through the endless flat farmlands of the Netherlands, and with landscapes like this, it's no surprise that the Dutch love cycling. If the flat scenery fails to keep you entertained, then the train is fitted with free Wi-Fi. However, the speed is somewhat slow. So, time for a look around the rest of the train. First of all, we come to the toilet. I was a little bit confused about how to get in at first, but it turns out you just open up the entire wall. Unfortunately this really wasn't in a good condition, being absolutely coated with graffiti. This was a shame as the soap, water and hand dryer were all in working order. This sort of vandalism was actually a common theme throughout the entire train, with graffiti and various broken fittings. Moving on, we can find the first class section, consisting of red leather seating in a 2 plus 1 layout. But the biggest surprise here in first class is the presence of two six-seater compartments. Sure, they're missing the door and window blinds for example, but I thought this was a really nice addition for a unit. At one end of the train, there is some room for bikes, but with Nederlandsche Spoorwegen's cycle policy only allowing travel in off-peak hours, and even then having a hefty charge of €7.50, you may be better off just leaving it at the station. It's not long before we're approaching Utrecht. This is the Netherlands' fourth largest city, and also the location of Nederlandsche Spoorwegen's headquarters since the company's founding in 1938. Naturally, the station is a busy one, with no less than 16 tracks for passenger trains. The station sees a very frequent service, with a train to Amsterdam running at least every 10 minutes. There's also an international ICE service linking the city with Frankfurt every few hours and Basel once a day. From here, the train reverses for the last few minutes over to Amersfoort. This trip cost me €15.50 Euros 50 for an off-peak ticket valid on any train out of the defined peak periods of 0630 to 0900 and 1600 to 1830. 
On this journey that gives a price per mile of about 27p, which I think is pretty expensive all things considered. The train arrives into Amersfoort Central just one minute late, pretty punctual considering the density and complexity of the Dutch railway network. This was a nice journey on the Nederlandsjesboevegen intercity train. A comfortable and speedy ride with a great service to all parts of the country. However, I really didn't like the poor condition of some parts of the train. Somewhat to be expected on an intense service, but still disappointing. I also think that the price was a little bit too much, though I can somewhat understand this due to the frequency and convenience of the service. If you enjoyed this video, then I recommend that you also check out the video on screen now. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on my next journey soon.